<laughs> in a world where murder is sport and losing is dying. In a maze where the hunter becomes the hunted. It's time to start running with the Mythwits. The show dedicated to all things geek pop culture, drenched in absurdity and coated with sarcasm. We, every week, we bring you news and interviews from the Geekiverse. We do our damnedest to be funny, but there are no guarantees. Should have been here 15 minutes ago. I'm your host, Peter Bryant, and joining me this week is Big Bird himself, Mike Kafis. And who loves you, and who do you love? That's right! <laughs> Jack Ballard. Birds. <laughs> Birds. Birds. James, James Carpio. Oh, wow, this is like deja vu. Wasn't I here yesterday? Yes, yes, you were. We got you again. And our guest this week is Leo Maverick Norman. Normington. Sorry. That's Close enough. Norman. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Thanks a lot. <laughs> uh, so Leo, Leo published, created, published, and distributed The Hunt, where you are game show contestants in a no-holds-barred bloodbath. There can only be one winner. He... He toured it to uh, more than a dozen conventions on the West Coast, where hundreds of fans played in league tournaments. It has been 25 plus years, but the hunt, along with the supplement overtime, are coming back. So uh, it's been some time now. So, so Leo, um, bear with me for just one moment. I'm going to ask James. I'm going to start with James real quick, only because I find this super interesting. James is like a super fanboy of this game. Like, did did you? Did you hunt Leo down to bring this game back? He stalked um, me. That's all right. Yeah. yeah um, so I was actually showing online today this thing here, if you can see it, yep. uh, mm-hmm. in the window, was uh, given to me uh, back in like 1991 or 1992. Uh, there's actually my cool character, Bobo Cop. Who <laughs> was, uh, <laughs> That's cool awesome. Trademark <laughs> pending. so yeah no i um so i contacted leo actually about 10 years ago when i was um running conventions i think for icon and um i mean i've loved the game so once tsr finally started getting its feet in the role-playing market after gygax magazine i was just i was talking to jason and i said look there's this game i absolutely love it's been in like it's been in my own personal pop culture for years. Let me reach out to Leo again and see if he's interested in maybe working with us to bring the game back. So that's where I think the story now begins. uh, Cause I reached out to, um, you know, Leo and basically kind of gave him the, uh, the idea that was rattling around in my head. All right. Well, cool. All right. So, so Leo, Hey, um, yeah, so so, so, talking to him was cheaper than a restraining order. So here we are. Right. <laughs> so, so James, so James came man. after James came after you and stalked you. So, um, so we, I, I was reading your interview. So James didn't James did a nice interview with you. Um, so I'm gonna bring up like one or two things from that interview. But sure. uh, one of the things that was was cool is like this came out of this came out of Cyberpunk, right? Yeah, so that's the system we started with. Uh, Art House Soaring gets full credit for the first couple times we played. So the the deal here is, you know, we've been playing, I'm sure as all of you guys, multiple games a week, big groups, save the world, you know, all the usual fun stuff. But it started to get intense to the point where you know, there's always that one guy in the gaming group that drives you crazy, but you got to work with them. And, and you really want to kill him, but you can't, right? Because he's like, your tank or your healer or something annoying like that. So I decided I'd, I'd give them all a break. We all made basically cyberpunk characters and just let them go at each other and said, hey, this is fun. And what if we had it as its own rule systems, make it even simpler? And that's where the hunt came from. Wow. Okay. Zero so redeeming qualities, absolutely just blow each other away, score points in the process. Right, right. So this is, <clears throat> is this basically, I mean, is this kind of uh, sort of a, a running man <clears throat> type of game for yeah, the most part? I get that comparison a lot. And yeah, absolutely. It, it is a, a game show. It is, um, I guess the difference in that was there was only one hunter, which was Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? So he was out there and the other guys, <laughs> other criminals were with him. In this one, you're the bad guys, quote unquote, or the the was like blowtorch and sub zero. Those are your characters. Like that's who you are. 
and you're against each other and against anything else you find out of the maze. Mm. So we're the heel. That's right. That's right. Okay. I can play. Right. <clears throat> so, so the idea is that you basically or play one of those. Or your cop, I guess, is uh, James was that time, right? Yeah. right. <laughs> so you, you make this stylized character. So you're encouraged to have like create like a crazy get up and a gimmick and like 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 a wrestler, like like Mike was saying, like a heel. Mm-hmm. Um, and and you're hunting them, and your goal is not only to kill the runners, but to to kill everybody, the last person standing, right? Yeah, and in fact, other hunters are worth more points than anybody else. So. Uh, mm-hmm. And, you know, and it, again, think of it as a reality show or a game show. You know, obviously, when we made this 25 years ago, we didn't know about reality shows. But right. today, think about how the drama of it, the, anything you can do to pull the crowd in, the more obnoxious you are, the more crazy your gimmick is, the more over-the-top your comments are, the more points you're going to get. Like That's how you win the game, is be more brutal, more hilarious than the guy next to you. Oh, that's so- great. So what would make this game really interesting? I mean, like, I'd be even tempted to play it if we could put uh, Kim Kardashian in there, uh, Anna Boo Boo, <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, Mike Kafis, Mike Kafis, and his bird. He'd be Big Bird. That's right. Well, you know, it, it's uh, funny. There's uh, there's optional rules in the supplement. There's actually optional rules where you pick one of the bad guys that's out there. And you make that bad guy worth extra points. That's right, overtime. Thank you, James. And so you could have Kim Kardashian running around, and whoever found found her and let's say takes care of her can gets extra bonus points, right? I want to play this now. I want I want to be the guy. <laughs> yeah, that sounds fun. Gets to, get, get to mow her down. <laughs> okay. Hey, store.tsr.games.com, Pete. What's that? I oh said yeah, store.tsr.games. <laughs> oh, man, yeah, you have to buy my own copy, right? You guys, are cheap bastards. <laughs> we'll give you the employee discount, which is nothing. That's right. right, yeah. <laughs> right. Employee nothing. discount. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, so, um, so you were playing this. You were playing this at cons. You're taking this around to different cons and stuff. Um, yeah. So we started. At, so I'm based in San Jose, and uh, we went to Pacific Con. Buddy Con, Bait Con, Sluggathon, any con that we could find in the Bay Area. And yeah, Dungeon Con is where we met James. Right. And uh, at the time, you know, there were a lot of, um, you know, Magic the Gathering and there was D&D, very quiet, intense gamers. And we said, fuck that. Let's make some noise. Let's get obnoxious. Let's yell and scream. And so I think the biggest we ever did was we had Buddy Con where it was eight tables of total of 80 players all in one room, just going crazy. And then we did tournament style. So it was kind of elimination or round robin, right? Like you go in, if your character dies early, you're out. If you live long enough, you move to the next table. And so we got down to one table and one winner. Mm. So, so James, we'll have to, Oh my God, if we get this thing ready in time, we get, we could have it at the the TSR room, whatever it's going to be called in the future. Uh, uh, Well, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. No, I was just going to say, um, no doubt. Actually, we're going to be running, I'm going to be running the hunt at uh, Kineticon in July. And we have actually a bar that that is going to be like an after hours gamer. People can go and get drinks and play games. Right. So I'm definitely going to be running the hunt there. And, um, you know, and I'll t- we'll, I guess we'll, we'll talk about it a little bit later, but definitely I'm, I'm going to be in contact with Leo to, uh, recreate hunt leagues, but do it more on a nationwide scale. Uh, like, so Jason and I are already talking about uh, doing a site with a leaderboard and almost like a sports page where people can go to and kind of see stats uh, across the country at cons of people who are participating. So, you know, awesome. start definitely start small, but um, I kind of have uh, big, big dreams. <laughs> for hey, so what so this could, could you eventually, I mean, are we talking like eventually like uh, like iron GM type thing where people could win like a, a trip to a con where there's, <laughs> where there's a, uh, um, you know, like a, a big tournament or something. Um, n- thoughts at least on my end have not gone that far yet, but think about it this way. Uh, ima- so imagine the intensity of iron GM but in a skirmish game where people are basically trash talking and, you know, doing this sort of like WWF sort of like just shaming. And it's, it's kind of hard to explain. I mean, definitely it's, it's a game that you have to play. And once you play it, it's very addictive. 
Right. Oh, I can see it now, yeah. dude. I can see it now. Look, so if you have, if TSR has its own room, right, and you have all these players and the guys have made up all their characters and they got their personalities, right, uh, before the before the match begins, like right before it begins, you walk around with a bullhorn and you give each player a bullhorn and they're supposed to, they walk around the room and trash talk the other players. I'm going to rip your throats out. I'm going to take my chainsaw and I'm going to run it right up your ass. You know what I mean? It's like, I, <laughs> I can see it now. It'd be fucking awesome. I would totally get into that. And that'd be worth 500 points. Who's next? Let's go. Right. Exactly okay. right. <laughs> so actually, Leo, then tell us a little bit about the, and I know we just, you touched on a little bit, especially in the interview, but give us an idea of what the, what the, what the feel, what the vibe was during the original nineties uh, league events. Yeah, sure. So again, at first, let me just tell you that 12 year old kids are the most vicious individuals you've ever seen. So if you get a table full of 12 year olds, you're going to get, Rates, you're gonna get all kinds of fun stuff happening to you. Their language is unbelievable, right? So no, but that was the intent. Like the whole intent was to get guys together. Excuse me, people, guys and girls were equal opportunity killers. Uh, <laughs> get them in the room, uh, ply them with alcohol as much as we could. Although obviously not the twelve year olds. Uh, right. My lawyer wanted me to say that. Boy, they get really uh, vicious uh, then. <laughs> that's right. Exactly. Yeah. And then just turn them loose on each other, right? So it's no more of this, like. I always joke about role playing. There's the R O L E role playing where you gotta like stay in character and you know do the right thing and all this frou frou shit, right? And then there's the R O L L playing where you just throw some dice. And so this is a, a combination in that you're talking crap to each other though, not to the GM. You get to say anything and everything that's on your mind, and you're still throwing big dice around all six siders in order to try and take each other out. So an example of a turn would be something like, you know, Jack runs over to Mike make some insane comment about Big Bird and how he's going to de-pluck him, whatever. <laughs> Pluck him up one side or the other. <laughs> he gets points for the comment. He takes a shot at him. He hits him. Jack takes it on the chin. He goes, you know, takes some damage. And then depending on the results of that, if he can make some smart-ass comment back, oh, uh, you laid an egg, that's the best you got. He gets points. Move on no, to the next guy. Keep going, right? Nice. nice. So, yeah. so there are points for trash talking. That is fantastic. One of yeah. the one of the favorite things that the people I used to, my group that we played uh, used to love was there's something called blatant disregard for personal safety, which pretty much meant um, other hunters would st climb up on the maze, pull grenades off their chest, and jump onto the foxes you know, screaming some something uh, incredibly amusing. And just the fact that they could possibly die from doing this action, they actually got more points on, on performing it. Yeah, wow. so if you put it on the perspective of a game show, right, or a reality show, the more over the top you are, the more crazy the fans are going to go, the more points you get, right? So if you're willing to tear off your armor and go running at the badass, screaming, you know, come and get some, you're going to get extra points. You may not be around the next turn, but you're going to get points for it. So, James, you know what you need to do? You need to, uh, once this game gets going and things are moving, you need to take Death Race Z and use the same engine, right? <laughs> and make a car game, take your Death Race Z into 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 it. So it has like an expansion into cars. Oh, that's, a, that's a thought. So Death Race Z is a game that I wrote a few years back where... Um, kind of almost the same premise where your corporate hired zombie killers out in kind of this Mad Max sort of landscape. And uh, it, was, it was heavily based off of Death Race 2000. So I think basically a lot of the same vibes and who knows, probably a lot of the hunt leaked in my head when uh, those <laughs> ideas came around. Right. We'll talk royalties offline, James. That's all right. <laughs> Death Race 2000 was definitely another inspiration for me. The original, though, let's be clear, the, the one with Stallone, not like the more recent crappy one with Straight Ham or whatever his name is. So, right. you know, but it was like if you, yeah. you had the choice to run into the hospital and run over all the old people and you get tons of points, I love that. That's a classic scene. We put stuff like that into this game as well. If you can kill the quote-unquote, you know, in the innocence, the criminals wandering around, lots of points. Uh, I've had guys pick up a criminal and carry him around the whole game as a shield that was fun I that one. Nice. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah exactly so uh, meat shield, like a real meat shield yeah, yeah. yeah and i think that's you know one of the basics of the rules is the more fun the more obnoxious like i don't i don't want to spend 30 minutes about or arguing over 
the proper velocity mechanism for <laughs> how, how many dice you roll because of the physics involved. Like that's BS. Like I don't, I don't care about that. I want to turn to last, or, you know, one round to last 30 seconds, go to the next guy, keep moving, keep the whole game going quick. And it's really that, that game atmosphere, that game show atmosphere is what's intended. Simple. Of, yeah. Have you guys seen, um, what's the show uh, at midnight, you know, the, like the comedians where the comedians are throwing yeah. smart aleck comments and the host That's Chris, saying, Chris Hardwick, That's right? Great points, yeah, Chris points, Hardwick. Points. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's the yeah. hunt. You want that kind of quick reaction. If this nice. would be this would be a game for you, man. You'd be roasting everyone and just no, I can't wait. I'm just gonna make the most obnoxious like Minotaur you've ever <laughs> seen and it's gonna be awesome. Right. Minotard? Is that what that was? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that might be, oh, yes! That great. And he has like mechanical legs. Minotard? Oh my god, that would be great. Oh my god. It's the best. And he has like a helmet and he's like. Minotard! <laughs> Cyborg. Oh my god. Minotard. All right. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be great. Right. That's fucking I, awesome. I'll be an albatross. Al- <laughs> <laughs> hey, Killer. Bird. What do you mean, B? <laughs> so, so speaking of uh, personalities in the game, Leo, I guess now is a chance to an- like ask some of my other questions I, d- I didn't actually put in the interview. So, in in the first book, there are I think three or four hunters: the armsmen, the surgeon. Foxes, right. Okay. Oh, these are foxes. So are these based off of people you know, or was this completely? <laughs> no, this was the most obnoxious stereotypes we could come up with. So the idea is in addition to the other hunters, right? So like if we were playing, there'd be us in there, there'd be random criminals, like perhaps a lawyer or a politician, Kim Kardashian, yeah. whoever else yeah. you wanted. But there's also a fox and the fox is as good as or better than a player. And so the idea is they're worth a lot of points, it's like, I think one of my favorite dragon quotes ever was, you know, a demon lord, awesome. They're worth lots of points and experience, right? So it's that <laughs> same thing. It's a fox, they're worth a lot of points, but they can kill you probably as easy or easier than any other hunter in the game. And so there's, yeah, sure, go ahead. What does the fox say? Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, God. Come on, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm so the only glad one- he yep. interrupted you for that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Come on. I'm sorry, Leo. Go Somebody ahead. kill his mic. That's right. Anyway. Um, I can. <laughs> and so Killing original... Mike is a theme that's very often brought up on the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this game will be perfect for you guys. That's right. right. So in the original hunt, uh, there's three foxes. There's Iron Cross, who's, you know, over the top, ridiculous, uh, white supremacist, crazy. You know, you want to kill this guy. Absolutely. That's what you're there to do. And then there's the surgeon, who's kind of a Hannibal Lecter kind of homage, and I can't, the third one's Armsman, which is uh, just like a nut job survivalist gunman. And then in the supplement, over time, we added more foxes. And of course, what we also kind of ran with the optional rule: if a particular hunter was good enough, lasted long enough, he could become a fox too, right? So there's that incentive. Although I don't think anybody lasted more than two or three games with one character. So <laughs> doesn't sound yeah. like it. Doesn't sound like it. All right, so so wait a minute. Uh, let's uh, let's back up just a tiny bit. This is a this is a board game, right? So this is um, correct. This it's not a it's kind of a role playing game, kind of a board game. Because I was talking to James about this before when I was trying to look it up because he was telling me, oh, it's a great game, The Hunt. We're gonna be buying, you know, not buying. I mean, TSR is gonna be working with with Leo to do this, and I'm like, I can't find anything on this on The Hunt at all, like online. And uh, he's like, and I was like, I'm not seeing anything in a role playing game. He's like, oh, well, it's kind of a role playing game, kind of a board game, kind of. So, so what? How does this fit into that mix? Yeah. So James has been using the term skirmish game, which I like too. So here's the original rules. If you can see them, and you got a nice uh, rule book in here. If you don't have your own battle map, then you should probably turn in your gamer card. But there's, you know, a maze and. I got them in here. Counters as well. So lots of counters that come preset with the game. But really, the intent is you, know, you make a character. Your character has, I think it's five. I'm not think. I know there's five attributes. It's all combat related, right? So it's what's your initiative? That's who goes first. It's your 
to dodge, so can you get hit or can you avoid being hit? It's your willpower, which is when you get hit, how much damage you take. So it's all combat-related stats. And then there's a dozen or so skills, fun things like melee, pistols, rifles, stealth, first aid. Again, there's no uh, heraldry. There's no... There's no charm. There's no intellect. Like, screw that stuff. We just stripped it down to the bare basics of what do you need to kill each other, right? So, so all right. Zone, zone. Uh, Jonathan Reinhardt is in the... He act now. He wants to... Now he showed up for the show. So, but no, just kidding. Sorry, Jonathan. Love you. Uh, but he was asking, what's uh, what size are the models? Yeah, so we use standard one-inch squares in, in the game itself, and that's what I've used on battle mats. And so any 25 millimeter lead will work. I've also used um, army men work really good. I've used okay. figures from um, uh, I can't think Axis and Allies, so like the little army guys that come in there make great prey and criminals to chase around. Cheerios, mm -hmm. coins, whatever you've got a lot of, throw them out on the board, let the hunters go kill them, and then eventually they'll find each other and kill each other as well. Is it similar to Frag, he's asking? Similar to Frag. I haven't played Frag, so I don't know on that one. Well then, I'll let you two uh, hash that out. So I could play this. <laughs> I could be the Scotty Dog from the Monopoly board. <laughs> yeah, sure. Right. So again, the the intent was, and is, I should say, get your friends together, get some frosty beverages, get your favorite snack, sit around the table, a maze of some sort that you're wandering through. I like to start the players each in their own corner or own section of the maze, so you're killing a couple of the criminals towards the middle and then it's who gets there first and what do they do when they get there and then there's some optional rules you can do things like maybe the first a game takes about three to four hours to play all the way through with six to eight players and you can go faster by you know making it a smaller map or by giving everybody like we're just going to do full weapons full combat from the very beginning or you can make it a little bit longer by saying for the first 30 minutes or first hour it's swords and knives and melee weapons only and then you know that slows the game down a little bit but gets you again up close and personal and good opportunity for some smart ass comments as you're slicing and dicing each other ah so what you get like an hour into the game and then like the the, the guys who control the board like your your richard dawson types your, uh, yep now your guns drop. go live right exactly okay. i got you okay. in fact i'll i'll give you a, a a convention moment here one of the harshest things i think was ever done which is you can hold your action, so if your initiative is higher than mine, you can wait until after I've gone or until after I've done something and then take your action. And so we had a time zone where, a time off where after a certain number of, like an hour or whatever, then weapons would go live. We were still in the melee section. One of the hunters runs up to another guy and says, I'm gonna point my weapon at his head. We're like, uh, you can't use your weapon. We're in the melee section. He goes, I'm gonna hold my turn. Next turn, we're now out of melee. We're in full weapons. He pulls the trigger. It's a good way to get things started for sure. <laughs> <laughs> nice messy oh. beginning, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly right. All right, so um, so so, uh, it's interesting. You know, today we take it for granted. We have Kickstarter, and we have you know we have uh, the, the internet, and just in general, we you know board game geek, and all these different ways to to get a game produced. But man, you did this back in the early nineties. Um, like how how did you make that happen back then? Because that that there was a real big barrier to entry back then. Yeah, thanks for asking about that. Uh, you know, it's it's funny. I these damn kids that are newfangled computers. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> so we we did it all on a, a Mac SE for our desktop publishing, which really consisted of printing out pages, photocopying, taping them over onto each other, then printing that. You know, photocopying that until we got it set together. We found a local printer who had no idea what gaming was, had no idea what we were. They thought we were making a catalog of some kind. Uh -huh. So we're like, yeah, catalog, sure, we'll go with that, yeah. Um, so, and then finding distributors was, uh, I happened to work at a game store at the time, so I knew Chessex, which is a you know, game distributor out here on the West Coast, pretty big across the country. So I actually called one of those guys and like, okay, how do I become a, a game company? How do I work with you? Figured out some of the hoops, and then I, now, this is how old school it was. I went to the library. Yeah, that's a place where they keep books. A book is a written, never mind. Anyway, so <laughs> went to the library and found address for yellow pages for other cities and would look up a game store 
call them up and say, hey, I got this game I want to send to you. They say, oh, you got to send it to my distributor. And my spiel was, oh, well, I'm sure they're already one of my distributors, but can you confirm who it is? They give me the info, and then I call those guys and say, hey, there's a game store that wants the game. They told me I have to go through you. So kind of a, <laughs> Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah exactly. Cool. Kind of a guerrilla method to do it. But, um, yeah, I, I always wanted to get it back to the point where we'd have a website up, we'd be able to get people to buy it online. And so using TSR's muscles for that is definitely a, a cool next step, especially given, I mean, come on, we all knew TSR. We all played that that genre, and I love that that piece of it, bringing the old school back for sure. Yeah, no, that, that's fantastic. Tell um, me more about this Atlas. Atlas? Atlas? Atlas. Yeah, you said you looked at atlases and maps and things. <laughs> I'm just, just... I looked in the yellow pages to be able to look stuff up. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yellow pages. It's like the, the farmer's almanac. Yeah, that's what it was, right? Huh. <laughs> I've heard of these things before. <laughs> it's this ancient thing. I... It's Jonathan, like a printed friends list. That's right, yeah. Jonathan would know about this stuff. Jonathan, who's in the chat room, is actually a librarian. So he, he actually works at one of these ancient, these archaic buildings. And he's I'm bibliotech. Sure. <laughs> what are he's teaching? Right. Right. But, Back you know, when, it's... It was, it was www.deweydecimal.com. <laughs> That's how he found everything. All right, James, exactly. what was it? Well, no, and I was going to say that the game itself is uh, pretty unique. Um, only I've only seen one other game company attempt something like it. So Goodman Games, I think about five, maybe five, six, seven years ago, did a game called X Crawl, where it was a fantasy. It's almost like an exact fantasy ripoff of the hunt, where <laughs> basically um, fantasy characters. It was. Fantasy characters went into a maze. However, it, there was still lots of, um, there was like high tech stuff in the dungeon, which, okay, whatever. But they, and they did, did a game, they ran a, a few modules for it, but then it just kind of disappeared into obscurity. But that's yeah. honestly the closest I've ever seen to this sort of concept in, uh, in a game. <laughs> that's cool. one of the cool things, you know, a couple of cool things we did from a mechanic standpoint, again, to kind of keep things moving quick, right? So it's all D6. A 12 is, let's see which way did it go? 12 is always a fail. Two is always a success, right? So there's that chance of luck that you can always get in there. We also did, um, let's see where I was trying to say, armor ablates. So every time you get hit, if it punches through, you get a couple points of armor and get knocked off. The idea is that over the course of the night, you know, you start getting a little more paranoid about that guy with the chainsaw because it can do more and more damage or get you more all the way through. We use crit charts, so depending on your size and how much damage is done to you, there's kind of three possible outcomes. There's the, it didn't do anything at all, right? Like you're really big, you did take a little bit of damage, so nothing happens to you. The second one is you're just dead, right? Just outright, you did so much damage, you're such a puny guy, you're gone. And then the third choice, instead of taking like hit point loss or other things like that, you actually lose stats. So you take negatives to stats, they can accumulate through the course of the game. And so that guy that started out with a size 12, really big guy, top of the chart, he gets hit a couple times. Now he's a size six. And so he's more worried about what kind of damage he can take. And so that's the mechanic for how you end up killing people. You kind of whittle them down the size chart and then do more damage to them and take them out. Okay. So, so it's a lot like, so it's going to be a lot like, um, you know, like playing Mech Warrior or playing, you know, Crimson Skies or any of those other games, these knights, like, like James, good fucking, that's a great way to put it, skirmish game. So it's just yeah. like one of those in a lot of ways, except you are a person, not a plane, and it's a lot more gonzo, a lot more fun, a lot more uh, uh, bantering with each other and, and, and being cruel and, and, and mischievous all in one. All right, this sounds like my kind of game because I like all those kind of yeah. games. I, I love fuck Car Wars is, is, is one of my favorite games. Uh, mm. Mech Warrior, love Mech Warrior. Crimson Skies, oh, that's, that's a blast. Uh, this sounds like it fits right into all of that, but also with beer and craziness. <laughs> beer not included in the box set, though. Just no, but you know, <laughs> it's it's you should put that on the box B Y O B, you know, <laughs> like somewhere right, yeah. on the box, hide it somewhere. Like when you lift the lid off of the box, maybe it's inside that <laughs> the, the lip inside. <laughs> you know? um, New all right. one beer counter that's included, yeah. 
Yeah, fantastic, fantastic. All right, so uh, you have one more one more thing I'm, I want to make sure I hit because you, you had it in your notes, and when people fill out the notes, I'd like to hit all that stuff. Uh, you said uh, you wanted me to ask you about your biggest wow moment. What was the biggest wow moment? Well, other than today with James still having his certificate from 26 years later, like that, <laughs> that, that definitely is a, a pretty amazing one. But uh, back in the day, as we were trying to go to these different game stores and you know doing this guerrilla real marketing that we were trying to get out, we actually had a, or I got a company in a game store in Australia reached out to me and said, hey, it's a couple of my guys are interested. You know, they come to my store, interested in playing this game. Can you send it to me? So. That's my claim that it's a worldwide game because we sent like six copies to Australia. I think that counts, right? Uh, so that was totally cool. And then I just seeing guys that still have this on their bookshelf or are still playing it every now and then and still, you know, bring it up. I'm like, wow, that's something I did 25 years ago and you're still playing it. That's They probably play more than I do, but that's great. I love that kind of stuff. Absolutely. That's awesome. I'm going to tell that's you right really now, cool. I think I'm going to make a prediction. James, talk to, to Jason about this. What? I think this is a fucking great game for the Germans. They love, they <laughs> fucking love board games. Okay, they love board games like, at like nobody's business. And um, you know, my, my buddy Norbert, he goes to a lot of conventions over in Germany. And, uh, and Germans, they love to drink the beer and they love to fuck with each other. I'm telling you, this would be a fucking great German game. I'm, as, long as, as long as I know Iron Cross is a bad guy and don't start thinking he's the good guy, right? That's awesome. No, they'll be good with that. The Germans are cool. I spent they're some time so, in Germany. They're peace-loving people. They have a long history of peace and <laughs> friendship, and so I don't know what you're talking about. Especially know. towards their neighbor countries. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Hey, look, now to be in all fairness, in all fairness, um, I have I've been over in Germany. And I have talked to a lot of Germans. You know, they it's really weird, but they they still a lot of the the younger Germans carry guilt over all that still. So they're yeah. they're actually good. They're really good good people. I think they would fucking love that. I'm telling you, this is a German. This is a good German game. You need to take That's this right. for Germany. You know, They'd love it. To me, it's this is a great game. You take it to a convention. You play it there. I mean, that's a great setting for it. We're like, you don't have to know anybody. You don't have to know the campaign or have any history of it. You just sit down and tear each other up. In fact, it's even better if you don't know the guy next to you because there's no guilt about the comments you're throwing <laughs> in his way, right? Yeah, and well, people dump you in the parking lot afterwards. Like, <laughs> what, were you, what were you saying about that? Yeah, but, right. but they're gamer guys. Come on, you can take them. So, right, um, I know, right? <laughs> hey, let's go. So, yeah, hey, Nick Beard, what so the yeah, fuck are you calling the Germans, me? I've insulted gamers, I've insulted right. bird people. All right. <laughs> right. Okay. Hey, bird welcome people. to welcome to the Mythwits. <laughs> I think Jonathan reminded me that that I don't know sometime last year, Mike. I said I was like, look, the people who watch this show are not quality people. They're like half. Of <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, you say a lot of things, um, Leo. I have a couple people in the chat that are just wondering where they can throw their money at you to get this game. So, so how much as of today? Yeah, sure. Wait, let's see. Do I want to talk about money? Yes, absolutely. So <laughs> as of today, you can get the hunt and overtime as a set on the TSR store, and it's twenty bucks for the set. Right. Awesome. Unless, unless James is gonna give you a special code to discount that. No, I'm kidding. I'm just No, no, no. That. But it you can definitely go <laughs> store.tsrgames.com. And that's where uh, you'll find it. We uh, we've been pasting a link all over Facebook and Twitter. So, all right, right. plug James Yeti. He'll give you a dollar off. <laughs> right. <laughs> you gotta plug that Yeti. You gotta plug it hard. Right. And if you Get let him, if if you let him watch plugging Mike's bird, then uh, you get a special code for that. <laughs> What I do with my bird is uh is my business. We're going hard on Mike tonight. We got to ease up. Yeah. We're going hard on Mike. Don't worry. You're not, you're not going right. to break. Not tonight. All so, right. So, uh, Leo, also, just to kind of, since we're kind of winding down a little bit, did you want to talk a little bit about your um, uh, the other version of the hunt that you've been working on? Yeah, sure. So, you know, what have I been doing the last 25 years other than all the typical life related stuff on the gaming side in the last couple, I took the hunt and I've created a card game as well. So the hunt card game kind of uh, some of my favorite card games, nuke war family business. I don't know if you guys have played either of those two. I would hope you have and kind of taken pieces of those plus the hunt original turn them into a card game. So one of the things that James and I are hoping to do is actually 
get that out on the market as well. Now that's not available yet. Sorry, you can throw money at status, but <laughs> you can't have it yet. But that's one of the down the pipe kind of things. And then you know, if we can get interest back in the game, if we can get people playing in the tournaments like we're saying, and again, I really think this is a you expose somebody to this game, they love it, it becomes a favorite of theirs. That's fine. Who's backing up? Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> so I think uh, if, <laughs> if you know if we can get through the prints that we have today, and we do some reprints, even talk supplements. I'd love to get more stuff out there for this game, based on what we see at conventions and how people play it. So, so how many how many copies do you have floating around at this point? Like, at what point will you have to like do the new box with? Because um, I, I know there's talk about once once the current amount that you have. Uh, runs out it's going to become uh you're going to redo do, redo a few things right sure i have three copies no uh, <laughs> so the original print that i did was about five thousand for the hunt three thousand for over time i've got a couple hundred left of each and it's really a matter of you know how quickly we can get through them and what kind of interest we get from folks right so limited <laughs> limited edition that's what we're going with limited edition uh rare copies original print whatever other terms we can add dollars onto. So we'll <laughs> and nobody is happier about this sale than Leo's wife. <laughs> she <has to> get <laughs> yeah, she wants them books. out of the garage. That's <laughs> right. How many times have moved those things? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. That's awesome. Oh, all right, well, fantastic. All right, everybody, look. Go to TSR now. Go go to store.tsrgames.com and buy this. Buy these books. This, this game. Is it coming in a box? Is it like a box set or just a couple books? No, it's uh, two books. Yeah. Two books. Okay. Buy his books. Buy both of them. This sounds like a lot of fun. And uh, James, we're going to be playing this. I don't care how we, we pull it off. But uh, yeah, well, at, you know, at, I was just thinking possibly maybe we can and we can stream it. Um, is set up an online game. We can do it through Roll20. Uh, where we can get a bunch of people on and we can we can just set up a map on thing. I don't know. It's just an idea if we want to kind of... Yeah. I'm open to that, sure. You well, figure that I'm, tech out I'm, and I'm on it. I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. It's going to take a lot of yetis. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be feathers everywhere. It's going to be mayhem. And... Right. Uh, That's right. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. So, so, Leo, thanks for joining us, but stick around because... I'm handing the show over to Mike because we have a game we'd like you to play with us. Sure, I'd love to say. Yes. Right. Uh, so there's no, there's no, you're not doing an official ending. All right, yeah. So, all right, give me one. <laughs> Come on, Mike. Yeah. No, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know when you're ready. All right, what's the, so what we're we doing? Icon there. That's good. So we're doing, uh, what are we doing? Match wits tonight, Mike? Don't you worry. I got it all set up for you. Oh, you got the music and everything? Yep. All right. Get so ready. Be no math. Go ahead. Uh, all the math is uh, is peak. So, <clears throat> all right. Here we go. And action. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, today we are playing Match Wits with the Myth Wits. And... Uh, Leo uh, is our special guest today, and also we have Peter Bryant. Hey, everybody. Hey. Hey, bachelor number one. Jack Ballard. Hey. And special guest, James Carpio. Howdy. Yeah, I also like sunsets and walking on cookies and walking very <laughs> I are they like cookies? sitting on cookies? Walking? Oh. It's walking. Yeah, today it's walking. Oh. Today it's walking. Okay. No, it's sitting. It's <laughs> sitting. He's a, he's a cookie sitter. Cookie all right. Sitter. <laughs> <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, Leo, starts. let me explain a little bit about what we're doing. Um, first, uh, we are going to be reading. I will be reading questions in which I will ask you to fill in the blank. Uh, fill in the blank with any word but blank. Um, before we reveal what your word is going, we're going to have our Mythwit panelists uh, take a stab at your blank, meaning that they are going to predict what your answer is going to be. 
So we will first uh, look at their answers, and then we will reveal your blanks. There will be four rounds for every correct match you have with our panelists. They will be awarded one million points. And for every matching answer that the panelists have amongst each other, each panelist will have 500,000 points. So uh, a lot of points involved. And anytime I feel so inclined uh, with this game, I always uh, feel free, uh, kind of like the game um, that you actually have called The Hunter. The Hunter. The Hunt. The Hunt. Um, is uh, I will award extra points for the uh, funny jokes. So um, this is what we're doing. And we are going to start. With Jack, where are you? Oh, my God. Jack disappeared again. <laughs> Oh God, where is he? Jack! I guess we're just starting with Jack, poor guy. We lost him again. Oh. He's busy. Oh, That's all that rustling around is going on. <laughs> I was so worried again. You were gone. Where were you? I had to get a piece of paper and something to write with because somebody didn't tell me we were gonna have the right shit down. That's what I had you're, to do. You're using I, love a a, I love that he has a crayon. <laughs> an I, I'm, I didn't know. I didn't know. Well, I guess you didn't know. Oh, yes, by any, everyone else, if you uh, can have a piece of paper and a writing instrument, that would help you. And then... Way to tell you now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. P.S. No, if he had known, he still would have had a crayon. Come on. It's yeah. true. It's how I lure them to my house. Hey, kids. How, he, how he takes his temperature. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, guys. So uh, I am going to uh, read you the first question now. Um, <clears throat> nothing controversial at all here, by the way. Just, uh, no. Just know that right off the bat. No, there are no wrong answers, especially. Okay. So, uh, the first question is uh, thusly. President Trump can't go 24 hours without putting his blank in his mouth. President Trump can't go 24 hours without putting his blank in his mouth. Oh, and All I also right. my answers. My answers I've pre-written out uh, here on these on these, so I will. You, everyone has a chance to match with me as well. All right, President, I am ready. All right, Leo's locked in. President Trump can't go 24 hours without putting his blank in his mouth. And our other panelists are still. I'm in. I'm in. Feverish writing. Yeah, I got it. All right, I think we're just about there, waiting for Jack. I'm ready. How's that crayon, How's that crayon doing? All right. Okay, we'll start with Jack. Jack, President Trump can't go 24 hours without putting his blank in his mouth. His lunch. It's very his important lunch. lunch. It's very important. Everybody loves his lunch. He loves Everyone? it. It's very good. Everyone says, I have the best lunches. The <laughs> very delicious lunches. Juicy Everyone ice cream. Says they're perfect lunches. Oh, you know, build a wall to keep all other lunches out. Huge lunch. Huge, huge, huge lunches from China. How about the kids? How about the how about the kids getting lunches in schools? Nah, no, they don't. Not <laughs> let them suck on ketchup packets. <laughs> right. That sounds like Mayor Quimby. Right. <laughs> yeah, man. Let him suck on. <laughs> hey, President Trump can't go 24 hours without putting his blank in his mouth. Who's up? James? James. Is it me? James. Yeah. yeah. That is you. All right. Without putting his cat's head, head. in cats. his mouth. Cats. Wow. I didn't know he had well, a cat. He has a yeah. cat. Now, was that supposed to mean something other than a regular cat? Was that was that like a metaphoric or a uh, what is that a double entendrical cat? No, no? It, it just kind of sounded like he would put a cat's head in his mouth, kind of like a lion reverse. So I don't he know. would pull it off his head and stick it in his mouth. <laughs> All right, <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm my answer. No. Okay. <laughs> All right, Leo. When you're a celebrity, cats just will let you do that. Right, yeah. Right. <laughs> He's grabbing by the right up and just come right in your mouth. Leo, President Trump can't go 24 hours without putting his blank in his mouth. 
Oh dear, old oh, daughter. Oh, 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 you are on the right show, sir. You are on the right show. <laughs> I'll take all my points in small cougar hands. That's right. <laughs> nice. Nice. All right. Woo. Uh, yes, daughter. That was the that was the best answer yet. Uh, give him oh. a point. A point. <laughs> one, just one. <laughs> it's, it's very hot in here right now. Just, just one. Okay. Just I said two. He gets two. Oh, two, two. Okay, two is important. All right. Okay. Uh. <laughs> oh God. Do I have... Okay, Peter. President right. Trump can do twenty-four hours without putting his blank in his mouth. His tiny Tyrannosaurus-like hands. <laughs> <laughs> huge. It's huge. <laughs> All right, hey, Mike. Look- can, yes. can I read um uh uh can I read Jonathan's real quick? Oh he yeah, yeah, good, that's fine. He had some good ones. So Jonathan said, um, let's see, he had Dick, <laughs> Pacifier, <laughs> Putin Schlong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. Sorry. <coughs> okay. <laughs> Putin um, I went, I went, see it now. I went, hey, uh, Putin, my uh need a little bit of some dick dick. <laughs> I uh, I went actually kind of uh, metaphorical and I said uh, his phone. Does that his read phone. right on his phone? Yes, phone. Right. put okay. his phone yep. in his mouth. His phone in his mouth because he tweets. See? By the way, right. this right. game is not brought to you by the University of Maryland Medical System, and in no right. way it has anything to do with them. <laughs> right. no, nobody, <laughs> nobody, does anything. Yeah. nobody there can there see that. Right. <laughs> the lawsuit. That that didn't happen. This pro-German game was talking about. <laughs> I can see the headlines. I found it. I found it laying on the ground somewhere. I don't know what right. to tell you. Okay. Gonna be uh, attacked by all the anti-fascist students at uh. Fucking... I know. <laughs> all right. Well, all right, Mike. Nobody mad. Nobody hey, as, long as, they, as long as they buy the copies, they burn. I'm all right with it. Yeah, right, right. exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Buy them and burn them, bitch. <laughs> Leo is still ahead by two, and that is uh, that can be uh, that can be a, a win in this game. Yes, it could. All right. So here we go. Uh, number two. <clears throat> I wouldn't say Ego the Living Planet is overcompensating for anything, but he does have a huge blank. Wait, could you repeat the question? Your mouth got in the way. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that Ego the Planet is overcompensating for anything, but he does have a huge blank. Who's Ego the Planet? Ego what? the Living Planet. That was uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardians of the Galaxy. I haven't seen that yet. Are you trying to ruin everything in my life? No, it, it, Why would you say that? <laughs> I haven't had a chance to see that. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't say that Ego the Planet is overcompensating for anything, but he does have a huge blank. So now I gotta figure out a way to really ruin the whole movie for you. What can I tell you? Didn't hear that. Spoiler: five minute synopsis of the movie. And he's got a huge head. spoiler. He dies. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh my god, I'll kill you. <laughs> no, actually, Ego of the Living Planet has been around since like the '90s, if not earlier. It's uh... oh yeah, he's an old Marvel. Yeah, he's an old soul. <laughs> I see. Oh, okay. right. Okay. Uh, I got my Jack, answer. Jack, I wouldn't say that Ego of the Living Planet is overcompensating for anything, but he does have a huge blank. <laughs> I have a huge blank because I've never heard of this character until six seconds ago. Oh, so, well. <laughs> so um, Ego the Living Planet can lick my nuts. How about that? Okay. That's, that's what he's got. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I've, never, I've never heard of this Marvel character. He has, All right, I, I am locked in. Let's go. Yeah, go. a large yeah. lick my nuts. Okay. A large mm-hmm. lick my nuts. Lick my nuts. That's good. Go. All, right. Okay. All right. James. James, I wouldn't say that Ego the Living Planet is overcompensating for anything, but he does have a huge blank. A Mullet. Huge... Mullet. Oh. Man, come on, it's Kurt Russell. Yes. That's true. That's true. Master okay. Mullet. That is no, uh, no worse off than my answer. Um. <laughs> oh God, I can't wait. We gotta, we gotta read um Jonathan's too. Okay. okay. Uh, Leo, coming up to you. I wouldn't say Ego the Living Planet is overcompensating for anything, but he does have a huge collection oh, of Hans nice. pants. 
That, nice. You know, I did not know that. I did not know that. Little known fact. Fun fact. <laughs> I wouldn't mind digging in that collection a little bit. I don't, they're getting kind of old though now. It might be. I mean, well, uh, I might still do it. Every, every pair is a granny pair. Right. I, <laughs> I'm old enough to be banging grandmas by now anyway. So. Oh, jeez. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> Because uh, before when that's... he was doing it, he was too young. Right. Now it's okay. Now yeah. it's okay. Yeah. If she wears yoga uh, pants, Thanksgiving took a bad turn. That's right. That's if, she's, if she wears there yoga pants, bird stuff that day. <laughs> would, would she have a nice grammal toe? I don't know. Anyway, go ahead, Mike. <clears throat> oh, oh God, uh, Pete. <laughs> yeah. I would say that Ego the Living Planet is overcompensating for anything, but he does have a huge blank asteroid impact like crater in his chin <laughs> again again <laughs> going with the whole uh theme of uh of uh what's his face there um kurt russell kurt russell, kurt russell. 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 yeah mm-hmm. kurt yep. russell there yep. you go he did play the part well okay and, and me lastly um making sure that this piece of paper is uh perfectly <laughs> uh <clears throat> I wouldn't say that Ego the Living Planet is overcompensating for anything, but he does have a huge uh, Aurora Borealis. <laughs> eh? Eh? <laughs> eh? <laughs> You're here all week? You happy with yourself? I have a feel. <laughs> all right, so so what is so Jonathan says uh, he has a a large Groot? A large North Pole. I like mm. the North Pole. The North Pole is a good one. Jonathan gets a point for North Pole. Jonathan. Okay, Jonathan. You might win this <laughs> game by proxy. This up, you might win. <laughs> okay. All right. Next. All right. Uh, number three. Did you hear about the new laptop that Jack bought? Yes, you, Jack. Jack, show Jack's face. This Jack. This Jack right over there. Or right over there. I don't know where there I am. Is. I got it. But, yep. Yeah. Did you hear about the new laptop that Jack bought? Instead of batteries, it runs on blank. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Did you hear about the new laptop that Jack bought? Instead of batteries, oh. Oh. it runs on blank. I got a better one. I got a better one. <laughs> I'm ready, Jack. I'm coming for you, buddy. Oh, we're coming for you, buddy. <laughs> All right, I'm in. I'm locked. All right. Yep, one enthusiastic panelist locked in. Everyone <laughs> Jonathan killing me. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. All right. All right. Um how we doing? We locked in? Everyone locked in? Everyone ready? ready? Yeah. Yep. All right. <laughs> Jack, I feel like yeah. I feel like you should go last. Um, I feel like you should go last uh, on this one, so uh, you're gonna That's hold fine. off. Okay. Uh, um, all right, here we go, James. Did you all hear right. about that new laptop he bought? Instead of batteries, it runs on the souls of the innocent. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Hard what, what, to come by. Fun fact: it's, He about not, Jack. He would, yeah, he to, he, dude, if he stomped on it, he has to leave Baltimore to do that, though, because yeah. <laughs> there are n- none of them here. <laughs> I've never talked to them. Right. All right, <laughs> you know, you haven't uh, spent uh, too much time with Jack, but I think maybe you spent enough, maybe to uh, ascertain uh, that maybe his uh, laptop would run on something other than batteries. What do you think that that would be? What would that run on, Leo? Yeti. Yeti. <laughs> Yeti. What is that? Yeah. Pilt? Was that pilt? Uh, poles. Yeti poles. Oh, Yeti poles. Ready? Oh. <laughs> nice. Nice pull of a Yeti. I guess that could uh, create some friction. All right, uh, Pete. Um, I know that you know Jack. I know Jack very well. Yes, you do. So uh, between you and me, sir, what uh, what is this laptop running on? Bong hits. <laughs> <laughs> wow, our answers are so close. 
Well, <laughs> now it's it was, that biblical it knowledge coming in handy. Right. It was a tough call. It was a tough call for me, to be honest with you. Uh, it was the same animal that is producing something that his is uh, running on. It was going to be unicorn farts, but instead, it's and unicorn, unicorn tears. tears. Unicorn yes. tears. Yeah. Yes. So, My own words used against me. Uh huh. Yeah. So Jack, I mean, uh, you are the only <laughs> one who knows what your l new laptop is running on. So please share with the class. That shit runs weed. on weed. <laughs> no. I mean, that's a half. That's a half, um, Mike. I, I, gotta, I gotta give that to to both of you. That's uh, that's definitely a five hundred thou. Yeah, I agree. So yeah, that's uh, that is super super sad. But yes, you do know Jack better than I. I, I have to. I yeah. do. I do Just a side note, I'm way too old for bong hits now. Bong hit would kill me. Go <laughs> fuck you up. I'm way too old for that. <laughs> oh, he, he knew me in the prime of my life when I was a young, spry, fat man. Right. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, there's no way I could I could do a bong hit now. Right. I, no, no gravity bongs? Like, no... Uh... <laughs> oh, God, no. God, God. God. Breaking into uh, Frozen lyrics here because of the Yeti. Let it go, let it go. So, uh, uh, that's a thing. That's a no, thing. He happened. says... so. so he said he, Jonathan was his answers were beard cream and crayons. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it worked on crayons. I got a shit ton of them and I don't even know why. <laughs> okay. It's all this innocence you're eating. <laughs> all right, yeah. Well, fellas, uh, we have one more question to go. And right. to be honest with you, to be honest with you, this is where we are gonna we're gonna separate, we're gonna thin the herd. Of Yetis, if you will, we are going to find out who really knows what Batman is up to. Uh -oh. Are you ready for the question? I am. Here we go. After Batman retires, he is turning the Batcave into a man cave so that he can polish his blank. After Batman retires, he's going to turn the Batcave into his man cave. I'm in. Polished yep. his. Okay. Uh, cue the music stopping. Everyone's <laughs> I, guess the, I guess the herd may not be so thin. <laughs> like my hairline. Let's do this. <laughs> okay, here we go. Uh, Jack. Yes. Jack, uh, what is uh, Batman going to polish in his man cave? Uh, he's gonna polish those anime pillows that those uh, kids have now that they like cuddle with and sleep and marry and have sex with. I can oh. see Batman being a uh, being an orphan. He'd probably really be into that pillow of of anime girl, and and he'd have a collection of those. Hey James, what do they call that? The the new girlfriend anime girlfriend thing? Oh, why are you asking me? But there's a name for it. <laughs> we saw it when you turned like crazy. You got a whole harem in there. Go ahead. Right. <laughs> I don't know. You seem to be hip to all that stuff. It's, it's like I'm. Uh, it's like it's like a play on Wi-Fi. My if wife he pulls one something. down. I'm gonna shit. Right. Uh, <laughs> no, I'll just polish my Laura Croft. Oh, God. Uh, Laura Croft. oh no. Oh, uh, she's so boring. She's a wasp. Come on, you right. want some exotic fruit? You want some forbidden pillow fruit? Right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. James um, okay, so Jack is uh, anime pillow fluffy. Yeah, there's a word for it. I, yeah, just... it's like it's like lonely dude. It's like I can't. It's like <laughs> one word. Yeah, I can't remember. Yeah, anyway, like everything yeah. you can to pretend you don't know that word. Go ahead, Jack. It's okay. You can <laughs> I just call her Sally. Right. No, <laughs> uh, okay. Well. Uh, James, uh, maybe you know uh, a word <laughs> that uh, Batman might be polishing that you don't have to describe in 80 words or less. His bat... Batmite. 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 Bat <laughs> He's... Uh, do, you know, do you know what Batmite is? I don't. What is oh, that? Wow. It's, it's... Never mind. Take too long to explain. Oh. <laughs> but I can see him doing that, James. Yes. Would it take more than 80 words? Come on. It, it would take more than 80 <laughs> words. 
All right, Leo. It's, it's an annoying character. It's it's the Scrappy Do. All right, I, I can do it quick. It's the Scrappy Do of the Batman universe. All, right, you took, you, you, all you needed to say is you have me at Scrappy Do. Now shut up. Okay. <laughs> right, Leo. All after right, I'm going for the match because somebody else had to have said is Robin. Is Robin oh, nice? Uh, yes, that is. Uh, that's a good one. That's Thank a good you. One. And I am. I'm just holding this piece of paper up here so everyone knows that I did not write anything down after uh, what what whatever Pete's going to say here. Um, Pete. Yeah. After Batman retires, <coughs> turning the Batcave into his man cave so that he can polish his. Matt Damon! <laughs> that is a long way around a joke. I know, it's... it's that's, never mind. That, I mean, that's a little too cerebral for our, uh, <laughs> our general audience. You want to explain that? It's a whole Ben Affleck, Matt Damon, you know, I'm fucking Matt Damon. All right, never mind. All right, Sarah Silverman. Okay, right. so uh, after Batman retires, he's going to turn the Batcave into his man cave so that he can polish his... Uh, Robin. Robin. Yes, that's right. Yes, bump it out, buddy. Boom. <laughs> All right, so hold on. Leo's got 500,000. Mike gets 500,000. No, no. Lee, Mike Mike gets a million because Mike matched with Leo, technically. Oh, you're right. You're right. That was yeah. a straight up. Yeah, because Leo's the guest. Right. Fuck. Right. Okay. Oh, yep. well, I win. I can win, though. Don't worry about it. You're not going to. <laughs> I'm not going to? No. All right. So, so wait a minute. Uh, uh, Jonathan said uh, uh, Jack could make one of those with a pillowcase and his crayons. Uh, <laughs> You've never seen me draw. <laughs> <laughs> Stick right. figure, lady. All right. We're running up with time. All right. So, Mike, are you ready to play the music? Yes. All right. Play the music. <sighs> Leo, you are our winner with one million and two points. Nice. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Just so like to thank the... all the little people. You're welcome. Yes. <laughs> the midgets? <laughs> what? No. That's right. Yeah. Oh, good. I hadn't insulted them yet. That's awesome. Magic. The list. <laughs> Sorry. I had to... Sorry, I had to squeeze those in real quick. All right. Exactly. And everyone has been alienated. We got check, check, and check. Everyone. <laughs> all right. <laughs> We're good. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's it. Let's wrap this shit show up. All right, Leo. Uh, thanks for thanks for coming on. It's been awesome having you on the show. Uh, I am totally looking forward to playing this game. I can't wait. I, James is gonna bring it up to TotalCon, right? And we're gonna yeah. play some. We're gonna we gonna play some of the hunt. Um, awesome. I look forward to the stories. Excellent. We'll, we'll we'll definitely share them with you, everybody. Make sure you go and buy go buy the hunt at TSR Games at the store. Um, the links are down there and earlier in the show. I'm not going to give them again because we've already done it twice. All right, everybody. Thanks for coming. And you've just enjoyed another awesome episode of the Mythwits podcast. Catch us live on Twitch Mondays at 930 p.m. Eastern time. You can jump into the chat room. We had a couple in there. Jonathan was very active. He said, he said earlier, he said, this show is so good. Why aren't more people watching it? I said the same fucking thing every week. Anyway, uh, <laughs> you can ask our guest questions. If you miss a live show, you can always catch the Encore episodes at YouTube forward slash Mythwits. Uh, find us at Mythwits.com on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Twitch, and SoundCloud as Mythwits. And coming to Roku very soon. I'm just finishing up the contract with that with Steve. Uh, do the like, follow, subscribe thing wherever it's appropriate. Please give us a bunch of stars and review on iTunes. Screenshot it or something. Prove it to me. Post it. Send it to me. Whatever. I will send you one of James's stray hairs. Um, Mythwits is part of the no, TSR yeah. podcast network. No, I'll send you something. I'll, Wait, I'll, from whatever. where? <laughs> where on James? <laughs> from his gone. beard. From his beard. Uh, if you like, if you like us, you're bound to like the other great shows there as well. Check out TSRPN.com. Mythwits is a Creative Commons product. Make sure to check out all of Studio187.com for more cool stuff. And please join our mailing list. We really want to start sending that out. Thanks everybody for listening. Tell your friends to tune in. And until next time, Mike. Mom!